Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson. I'm talking about my favorite topic of why I go to church. And this will be a family edition. I have a special, special guest, Evangelist Linda Gibson, a.k.a. my mother. Would you like to say hello? Hello, everyone. Nice to have something to say. And I'm here to say why I go to church. So... You know, I talk every week about why I go to church. And one of the most important things I tell you is that we are the church. Where we go to fellowship is literally where we go to fellowship, but we we are the church. And if you don't recognize that you are the church, that's half the problem. Because for many of us, we're the only Bible that most people will ever read. And I think it's imperative to recognize that we are the body. And for a body to fully function and operate properly, you must practice operating properly in your private time. For me, many people say they love God, but you only see it on Sunday. Monday through Saturday, I don't know where they be. I don't know if they read the Bible. I don't know if they pray. I don't know what they do, but I know from personal experience from people that I fellowship with, a lot of people say they go to church and they only go to church one day. I want you to know that you can go to church anywhere, anytime you want to go to church because you are the church. So I go to church in my car. I go to church in my house. I go to church at my job. I go to church in the bathroom. I go to church in the store. I done been to church everywhere because God is within me. And because God is within you, you can have church anywhere you want to. Sometimes you're at the doctor's office, you got to go to church. because That doctor saying something that you don't like. And you got to say a little prayer between you and your heavenly father. So just know that you can go to church anywhere. But I have my mom, evangelist Linda Gibson. So this is because it's in my blood. The reason why I say that is because this is what I know. This is all I've ever truly known to be true. So... I'm going to ask her, she don't really do too many Facebook lives, but she's not a stranger to preaching because I've grown up listening to her preach for for many, many, many years. So, Mom, why do you go to church? I go to church because I love the Lord and payday is coming after a while. And I know there's a real heaven and there's a real hell. And because I know this, I, I sing a song to take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. And when you go everywhere, yeah, if he's in you, you're going to take him everywhere. So he has to be a part of your life. You have to love the Lord and know that he's real, regardless to any situation that you be in, regardless to what it looks like. If you know that there's hope after the end and you're preparing to leave here. So many people say there's not a hell, you know, hell's on earth. But I want you to know this is a real hell. And when you get there, it's no turning back. We sing a song, no turning back. I want you to know I take the Lord with me everywhere I go. When I go in the store and when I see people and they'll ask me, said, uh, how are you? And I'll say, I'm blessed. And they look at me and I let them know that I'm blessed because I'm in the land of the living. The Lord allowed me to see you today. And I got here in one piece. We take that for granted. But God has control of our situations and our circumstances. And I've been, my mom brought me up in church and all I know, mom would say, pray. And if you pray to God, he will answer you. I'm not talking about praying to somebody that can't answer, but the God I serve answers all the time. Say, may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. And there's power in the name of Jesus. And I take him with me because he dwells within me. And he has to be a part of you. It's not just a one time saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and He come into your heart and you haven't changed. When he comes into your heart, he will truly change you. He'll let you know when you get ready to do something wrong, when you make the wrong move, make the wrong decision, say the wrong things. The Lord will let you know. You shouldn't say that. And sometimes the Lord will let you know that you need to apologize. And that is the hardest thing to do when you make a mistake and you hurt somebody and you want to get back at them. And scripture said, he that winneth souls is wise. So You have to learn how to choose what you say. Even when you get upset, a lot of times I'll say, Lord, give me grace. God, help me to say the right thing. I don't want to say the wrong things. So 
That's why I go to church because God answers my prayer and he hears my every groan. He says, Sister Gibson, you don't cry. I do cry. But when I cry, I cry unto the Lord and he hears me and he delivers me and he gives me the strength. Step by step, I go to church. Step by step, I say, God, lead me. Guide me. Help me to say the right thing. Help me to do the right thing. Do I make mistakes? Yes, I make mistakes. But the word of God let me know I can come to him boldly and I can confess my faults. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And the most important thing, you have to learn how to forgive yourself. So you've made mistakes and nobody seems to understand. God understands. And that's why Michael's telling you he goes to church because God is a deliverer. He's our defense. He's our strength. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's there before you get to the trouble. And a lot of times he warns you. Somebody will say, you shouldn't do that, son. You shouldn't do that, daughter. And nowadays, I go to church. I say, Lord, I thank you for the training that I have. I thank you because you know what? It takes a village to raise kids. And today, our society, our kids is raising us. And there's something wrong about that. And what's wrong about it is, the scripture said, train a child in the way he should go. And when he get old, he won't depart. But if you don't let them know there's a God, if you don't let them know that you can pray and God will work it out, they don't know nothing but cussing and dancing and doing the things that are out of the will of God. What are you doing to oppress upon your child that God's a prayer answering God? Let them know that God loved them in spite of, and he promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You can only do it through him. So he's the only one I know that can pick you up when you fall down and he can make your pathway clean and he can wipe the slate clean. People hold stuff and said, I remember when, but when God forgive you, he don't keep bringing it up. So somebody today, learn how to forgive and don't keep bringing it up. When you spill a glass of water, you can't put it back in the glass. So what am I saying? You might never forget the hurt, but you don't have to keep bringing it out. So the reason I go to church, because God is real to me. He supplies my needs and he's my joy and he's my peace in the time of trouble. A lot of times stuff happens. I say, Lord, help me. You're the only one can help me. You're my defense. And I come to tell you, if you get in God and get somewhere where the word of God is teach, where the word of God is explained to you and let you know the word of God said, holiness without no man can see the Lord. You're not going to enter in without being holy. You're not going to enter in without being clean. You're not going to enter in. They says you can call anybody. The only one to call is Jesus. I don't care what they tell you. Jesus is the only one. So I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want you to know, if you go by Jesus, you can forget it. You can forget it? You can forget it. So let, let me ask you this question. You said your mom introduced you to this man we call Jesus Christ. So how young were you when you uh, first started seeking after God? I was young. I can really say since I was a little girl, I can, I can remember first time my mom took us to church and we were going to join church and my daddy didn't believe church, so we were gonna get we was gonna get baptized. So he came to make sure we didn't join church when we were in the Methodist church, and he fell asleep. By the time we woke up, you know they had already called us. We'd join church, but by the age of twelve, I came to Have the Grace Maryland, where my pastor's Bishop Harry T. Lee, and back then it was Bishop Charles Johnson. And I heard the Word of God preaching. And my mama always used to say, "God, if there is a better way." Let me find it. If I'm missing something, let me find it. And when we got there, he was preaching that holiness was right. He was preaching that you needed the name of Jesus. He was preaching that you had to be baptized, had to be born again in the water and in the spirit and have to go down in Jesus' name. The scripture said, neither is there salvation than any other than the name of Jesus. And as he began to teach, my mom got baptized. She went down in water. You know, when we little, when they said, have you been baptized? And they said, well, we were Christian and we were baptized. To be baptized means to be immersed in water. So you had your little baby sprinkled. So sprinkle, so sprinkling is not enough? 
Sprinkling is not enough. He said you got to be <laughs> baptized in water. Submerged. Submerged, completely covered. We won't drown you, though. We won't <laughs> drown you, I'm telling you. So if you, you've been, you know, you've been christened, you ain't been baptized. You got to go down in the water. And I tell them all the time, we don't baptize babies because they don't know nothing and they can't even hold their breath. You know, when they get ready to baptize, you say, hold your breath. Well, we dip you down. The baby can't do that. And you're supposed to know what you're doing. So I want you to know, if you got christened, you ain't baptized. You haven't went the right way. You need to find somebody that's going to put you down water in Jesus' name. And you say, well, Sister Gibson, I've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I know those are titles. But when they get through, if you got to say Jesus. You got to call on the name of Jesus. It ain't Michael's my son. He's a father and he's a husband. But his name is Michael. So you can go in the store and holler son all you want. All the sons in there until I call his name and say, Michael Ray Gibson, your mom wants you. He realized, hey, she's calling me. So I'm telling you today, if you have not went down in Jesus' name in a watery grave and come up and you got to speak in tongue as the spirit of God give on, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost? You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to keep you. He's a keeping God. You, a, you heard it from her. He's a keeping God. I want you to know you need Jesus the right way. So let me ask a question. So, mm -hmm. you, so you got baptized at a young age. Mm -hmm. When did you feel comfortable speaking in front of people about Jesus? Like, What, what gave you that boldness? When did that happen? Ever since I've been a teenager, all I know, I wanted everybody to have what I had. So you wanted to share it? I wanted to share it. I wanted to let them know that, hey, I found somebody can answer my prayer. I found somebody when I get in trouble, he'll let me know and have people to warn me. And and people are there here to help you today. I don't have the scripture on hand, but Proverbs says that we should train our children and that we should let them know, give them the rod of, con of correction. So find that scripture in Proverbs. It'll let a mother know so a child left to himself will bring his mother to it's shame. Open shame. It don't say open, it says to shame. To shame. Wow. To shame. Wow. So all you mothers is think it's all right to let little Johnny do what little Johnny want to do. You need to find that scripture. And it's in Proverbs. I don't know exactly where. But it'll let you know. And I used to say open shame, and God told me one day, say, scripture don't say shame. Don't say no open shame. So I said, Lord, I got to find. I think Proverbs 29 and 17. One of those scriptures. I want you to find it. It tells the woman, the mother, to train that child. To train them. And the rod won't hurt them. The scripture said, beat them and won't die. Now they tell you, your little Johnny can say anything. I want you to know when you get in God right, it'll make you train your child right. It'll let your child be the respectful we got so many disrespectful children because their parents not taking them to church and they don't know you say honor your father and mother i can't honor you when you ain't teaching me nothing you got to teach somebody something what are you teaching little johnny are you cussing little johnny you giving little johnny a little drink and say go to sleep take them to church i want you to know i love you and i want you to know that god is able to do anything but fail. So it's Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. That's the word. Now what you gonna do about it? You gonna let them say, let little Johnny raise himself? The mother and the father has to train these children. And the scripture said, Father, provoke not your children to wrath. You don't have to provoke them. But you need to give them the word of God. That's why I go to church. And I tell Michael Lemma all the time, Jesus is the only way. I don't care what nobody say. What nobody said. So we're going to read, Rise put up Proverbs 22, 6 through 8. So I'm going to read that. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrow is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. You got to train him up. I think um, 
for me personally now in this this age there is no one home to train no, because we're all, we, many of us are busy pursuing a career many of us are pursuing you know financial things and you can have all the money in your world in the world it can't make a home it can buy you a house but it can never make a home you can have all the money in your world and honestly you can never truly have real friends because when your money run out those friends are gone and i speak a lot from the loss that i've suffered in my in my life and i know that it's family is very important it's, it's very important and i can say as a kid they used to say oh your mom you that church boy your mom your mom up there preaching your dad up there teaching and people used to try to make me feel bad because my parents read the bible and i'm feeling like you should feel bad because your parents only read the jet and ebony which is counterfeit information they read gossip so you're mad because my parents read the bible and you have because your your mom reading counterfeit information your dad reading counterfeit information your parents allowing someone else to tell them a vision for their life but i should feel bad because my parents laid the foundation on a more sure word of prophecy which is the word of god and that's in the bible too so it's funny because people will try to make you feel bad because you read the bible i remember people used to say well you don't drink what's wrong with you you don't drink i was like well my parents raised me not to drink alcohol it's okay you want to drink alcohol but that's just not what i do and, and i i'm fine drinking you know non-alcoholic beverages there's plenty of things that uh i could do and be happy so it's 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 funny because it's come full circle for me because there was a time when you're young and your peers they 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 really would try to make you feel bad but then you realize how much dysfunction other folks had in their life and I realized the reason why we functioned so well was because we had the word of God. And I would rather function properly than have what I call a fugazi life, a fake life, with all these amenities around me. Because you can have a lot of things around you, but that don't mean that you have peace. That don't mean you have, you know, all your mental faculties. Because I've seen a lot of people burn out from work. I've seen a lot of people burn out trying to live up to the Joneses, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And my greatest role models <laughs> were my my parents. I mean, honestly, I mean, I never really looked up to these crazy superstars and nothing. That just wasn't my thing because they weren't tangible. So I'm very happy for, you know, the foundation that was laid for me. And I, I'm, I'm very thank you for my mother you know moving from charleston I, di I didn't know her then she wasn't my mother at the time but i'm i'm glad that she moved up here and she she found a, a thing so i got a question for you so when you met my father was he saved no he wasn't saved no so why he get saved you it's, think well he liked me and i told him if he liked me he had to go where i was going and i was going to church you hear that ladies <laughs> did you hear that repeat that just for the people that might be wondering repeat that he liked me and i told him i was in church and if he wanted me he had to come where i was and he came to church so the moral of the story is you don't want to let down your standards to get a man if you love god and the things of god you don't have to go get a worldly person and just because a guy said he's gonna get saved and he got saved yesterday don't mean you marry him you know the day after yesterday you know what i'm saying make sure that he's right because there are men that will come into church just to get you out of the church but if you have a foundation of saying this is where i'm going to go this is where i'm going to live this is how i'm going to roll if he love you and he wants you they'll get his act together now hopefully he'll love jesus like in the process and stay and, and stay we, we we want him to stay but <laughs> anything anything that you can use to draw them i think is a positive it, it, it's it's a blessing so this is what i know i mean when i say this is what i know this is what i know a lot of people don't know uh church like i know church 
but we are the church and i know my mother and my father hey tim I'm, I, i'll let her know you hear tim grimsley on the line tell him praise the lord you can tell him praise the lord praise the lord tim uh i'm glad you're looking in and listening we uh we we grew up in a very close-knit church and it was really odd as i got older seeing all the different things because we would actually grow go to our, our church councils and we literally stayed in each other's houses when i was a kid so we didn't go to like hotels and motels you was rolling up in people's cribs sleeping on the floor uh using their bathrooms their facilities and, and it's amazing because there was just so much love because it was about the church and when i ask i keep saying we are the church i have people on this line today you know hey hey mike jones uh that are my family and they're not my blood family but they're my family because we was raising the church together and it was just about doing things with such a brotherhood a sisterhood and it was like everybody was my parents i mean bishop mac uh uh, Bishop Kelly, Aaron Kelly, uh, even, you know, Bishop Foster, uh, Sister Fickens, Evangelist Fickens, the Harris family, Bishop Harris, they weren't bishops all at the time, but it's amazing how, like, the relationships that I have with the Grimsley family, the Harris family, the Fickens family, the Carmichael family, these people are still like my brothers and sisters today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if I needed something, they would help me no 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 doubt yeah. and it's like i don't even see them every day but we pick up just like yesterday because it really is a family and you really create a bond and one of the reasons you know i, I believe god put it on my heart just to talk about church is because we're not weird old we common people like i remember we used to have the young people we would go to amusement park every summer and we would go, we would ride, we would do things like normal people do. Uh, we'd have a church picnic at Lums Pond and we'd have the, the baseball game and we would play baseball like normal people play baseball. Tennis, Tennis bicycles, um, just normal things. And people think because you go to church uh, or you have a family who's full of people that love God, that you do some weird, strange things. Like we do normal things we go eat together like at a restaurant i mean my church now we go to shady maples the the men do and we go eat and we have a good time we go hang out we've gone bowling there's plenty of things that we've done as a church family that is normal and and my cousin uh chic uh adrick turner senior now he don't lose chic anymore or he might but anyway every new year's for probably about 18 years he would stay the night and we would make pancakes and we have pancakes and to this day these Amen. years later we still yes lunch pond man lunch pond was a beautiful place it was it's just some great memory so it's in the family man it's 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 in the family and i don't think you should ever be ashamed to just to be like i love god i love the things of god because oh musical events tons of musical events i mean that was one of the, the the best parts about for me for church um i mean the preacher's always good but as a kid the music i mean you want to talk about you thought you think you're saying something because you're saying like beyonce i'm gonna just use her because that's how i can think of right now man when you had corey carmichael chrissy carmichael sylvia grimsley then you put um some of the other grimsley sisters and then you put the harris family together then you had the Fickens, you had Marcy Fickens. Man, I'm telling you. And then when we brought Joe Thomas on, on the on the track, man, our church, that song be jumping. <laughs> I'm talking about we should have paid, we should have charged people to come <laughs> to some of them services. Some of the look, some of y'all know Mark Grimsley, uh, that's local on the line. Y'all know Mark Grimsley is probably one of the the the, dip, the dopest piano players out there. We had Mark Grimsley, we had John Grimsley, then we had Wayne Grimsley when the when the North uh New Jersey people would come on. I mean, it was it was fun. I mean, my mom would tell you, we would be in church 12, 1 o'clock. And Are people and people would be like, Where you been at? Church. Church. 
<laughs> they be like, you couldn't be in church, church that long, just hours, mm-hmm. just feasting and, and, and dining on the things of God. But most importantly, people that love God are people. We're people. We're people just like you are. But mm-hmm. but we, we try to do what is right because we know what is right. And I think that's one of the biggest things is that you know what is right. So you do right. I don't have to do right because you're watching me. I do right because of the God inside of me. <laughs> because God lives inside of me, yeah. I do right. <laughs> However, that don't mean I don't make mistakes. Yeah. That 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 don't mean that I won't slip. That don't mean that I won't fall. However, we should be practicing living right as a practice. Yeah, because a person that practices sin is a sinner. Just because you sin don't make you an active sinner, right? But if you practice sin, then you're a sinner. It, it's it's plain and simple. If if you, oh my God, sleeping on the church floors was no joke. Look, I would go to church, I go to sleep, wake up, be at church, go to sleep, wake up, be at church, and and honestly, I look back on it, and and. <laughs> I turned out fine. I think I did. I mean, I'm not gonna ask her if she think I turned out fine because she's my mom, so she might think I'm biased. She <laughs> might she might be a little bit biased. So I got a question for you. When when was the first time, if you can recall, you ministering publicly? Like at a service. How how, how did that feel? It was good. It was good. To me. To you? Yeah. Now I remember growing up used to uh, go on the broadcast and used to speak. Uh, and make your tapes. Mm-hmm. How 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 did you get comfortable just talking with nobody there? That was kind of hard. Um, actually, preaching the message with nobody there, but I just asked the Lord to help me, and the Lord blessed me to do it. And I discovered it's hard when you have to preach and nobody's there, nobody's there to say Amen or Thank you, Jesus. And you're like, Lord, I got to fill in, and I discovered that. 15 minutes or 20 minutes is a long time to preach with no full ends. So the Lord blessing that um, Ella Bruce Bassey, um, when he went to California, gave me and El Lamar's his time. And so we took turns preaching and then I discovered it's really hard, but I thank the Lord for that opportunity to actually minister on the radio for, I think it was like a half an hour. I really appreciated that time. And then after that, I helped do the broadcast of Gospel Tabernacle. But I just thank the Lord for the doors that he's opened and the ways he's made. And I'll tell anybody, if you live right, the Lord will open doors and make ways for you. And you don't have to have any gimmicks. If the Lord tell you to do something and you're supposed to do it, when it's time, God will open that door and God will make the way. And that is my main goal is, Lord, help me to be obedient. Help me to move when you tell me to move and say the right things when you tell me to say it. A lot of times the Lord will tell us things, but it's not the right time. It's not time to move. But when God tell you to move, I don't care who it is today, be obedient to the will of God. And if you ask God for the right direction, he's going to send the right person at the right time. And you'll know it. You don't have to worry or wonder about it. I just want you to know that God's a God that answers prayer. And you got to pray sincerity. You ain't got to scream. You don't have to holler. You don't have to fall out. You can just whisper a prayer because God hears our every groan. So I just want you to know that. Find a church you can go to where the truth is being preached and where they're not sugarcoating God's word. Sin is sin, and I don't care who it's sin, and it has not changed. Holiness is right. It's either holiness or hell. So I got a question. How do you pray? How you how did you learn how to pray? Because I hear a lot of people say just pray, but what if you don't know how to pray? Like like how how do you, how does someone learn to pray? Well, I would say I always mom used to tell us to say thank you, Jesus, and then the Lord will give you other words to say. I just thank Him, thank Him for all that He's done for me. So you have a grateful heart. Thankful, all the little things He do. You can start by saying, Lord, I thank you because I'm in the land of the living. You could. Every day, get up, say, Lord, I thank you. You let me get up and you're able to turn your lights on and your house is in one piece and you go outside and there's nothing wrong with your car. Those are the things you start thanking the Lord for. 
going to the store and getting across the highway safely, coming out of the store and nobody snatching your bag. Those are the little things. And why then you start thanking him and you're praising him for the little things. You know, say thank you, Lord. I just thank you for that. It's no words to tell you, but you can always say thank you, Jesus. And if you're grateful and you're thanking the Lord, and you start praising God, will start doing things for you. Then you see somebody that's homeless, you can say, Lord, help them. Just asking the Lord to help somebody is a prayer. Lord, give them the right direction. You see the alcoholics, say, Lord, help them to get sober, Lord, because they got situations and problems and they just need help. And sometimes you can just say, Lord, Tell people, I love you. The Lord love you. I'm praying for you. And they might get nasty. And you can say, okay, and go away. But God will do it. And later on, they'll remember, that woman said, have a good day. God bless you. Be of good courage. Sometimes all you do tell people be of good courage. I've been still, sometimes people walk up to me and just want to talk to me. And I'll say, do I have a sign to tell me everything? But then yes. I said, I said, Lord, just help me. Help me. Out. And I just... Stay there and listen. Then I walk. I said, well, I guess I did my work for the day. <laughs> so I want to read you this this verse real fast. Uh, Psalms 100. This is just to kind of piggyback off of what she says. Psalms 100, verse 1, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse four, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. So one of the keys is entering his gates with thanksgiving. When she talked about praying, that's one of the things, you know, sometimes people say, I don't know how to pray. Well, just in his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise mm -hmm. and be thankful unto him and bless his name. And one of the, the greatest blessings for me is waking up with my eyes open in the land of the living. I know people say, you know, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. I know people say that. Well, I like this life that I'm living right now. So when that day comes, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to be absent from the body, you know, when that day comes. But right now, I'd rather wake up in the land of the living because this is what I know. But I know that he says men ought to praise them. Pray, we, we, it, I think we just got to learn, and this is just, this is a Michaelism. This ain't a Bibleism. We got to learn that it is God's will for us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul, that is our mind, our will and emotions prosper. God's ultimate goal for us is for us to prosper in our mind. You have the, the devil, when I'm saying the devil, when Jesus fasted for 40 days, the thing that he promised him was fame. The thing that he promised him was you can have all the kingdoms. You, you can have all of it. He even challenged him, if you be God, jump off of this thing, and the angels will catch, catch you. He challenged God on all those things. But if you look at that, all of that was testing his mind. It was testing his mind because he was saying, are you God? You don't got to prove to people that you're a Christian. You, you don't got to prove to nobody. You don't got to be up in these streets arguing with people. You love God, you give your heart to God, you don't got baptized, and you know that you made a change in your life. You don't got to be arguing with people. You you just say, look, it is what it is, but you don't need to be tempted to in your mind and be tormented in your mind because that's what the enemy does. He plays with your mind, but God says he's come that you be prosperous in this thing. The devil will give you everything. He'll give you money, he'll give you fame, but he's not going to give you peace here. You're going to have money, but you ain't going to be able to sleep. You're going to have women, but you're going to be wondering which, if, if I hope this one don't catch me while I'm here. <laughs> you're going to be partying, but you're going to be wondering who's robbing me uh, of my money. You will have all this stuff, but you won't have peace here. He, he is the only person I know that brings 
peace here. He the only person I know that bring peace here. And that's God's goal is for you to have peace here. Here. If it, Money is no good with no peace. That's why Biggie said more money, more problems. Yeah, you got more money, more problems because the people that you have around you, I don't know if they really love you. They just love your money. And I'm not against money, but I like money. But I, I would rather have peace and have no money than have a lot of money and no peace. That's just, just for me. Because Robin Williams, I think about him all the time. We talk about how he was such a great actor. And the man had no peace that he took his own life because he had no peace. Oscar winning actor, comedian, every accolade that you could think, but he had no peace. And the word says that he'll give you peace that surpasses all of your understanding. And the one thing I'm gonna close on, this is gonna be personal, mom. So how do you still go to church and love God after your mother is no longer with you? after your your husband is no longer with you how do you still say god is a good god and a loving god after you have to deal with the loss of loved ones well i just say lord you know and you promised you wouldn't leave me now would you forsake me and people that live for the lord the scriptures are absent from the bodies to be present with the lord and we sing a song if we die now we won't have to die no more so he's went to be with the Lord and they went to be with the Lord and we all have a hope. And I, one day I plan to be with the Lord and I plan to trust him. So even though they're gone, I still have their memories and their memories never die. And you can hold on to good memories. And a lot of times I go to church and my mom always used to say us when we had problems, she said, just pray. So I just pray and say, Lord, give me strength. Take me through. You're not going to leave me. And I, I told a brother the other day, I said, even though people die, your memory love, lives on. So you hold on to the good memories and they'll, ne they'll never, you know, they're gone, but you got their memories and you have those thoughts and those moments and you sometimes you laugh and you cry, but God is the one that gives you strength. And so I said, Lord, you said you're going to give me the strength. So I rely on him doing that. And I sing a song as we call on Jesus. He'll answer, prayer. He'll answer prayer. So that's what I do. I said, Jesus, you got to help me. Lord, I thank you for strength. Lord, you got to help me. And I'll say a lot of times, Lord, you're going to get me through this. Because that's why I go to church. Because I know Jesus is my source. And he's my answer. And he's my deliverer. And he gives me the strength. Say so day by day. Say so step by step. I can make it. Only reason I'm making it is because Jesus is holding my hand. Said he'll never leave me. Nor will he forsake me. But you got to believe that. You gotta, you gotta hold him. God's word to that. You gotta believe that He is the source that you need. So God is the source of your strength, and He says that He is a rewarder of, of them that diligently seek Him. So, in closing, I guess I'm not gonna close multiple times, <laughs> but I go to church because it is in my blood, spiritually and naturally, and I'm proud. You know, to call this woman my mother, I'm, I'm proud to call Bishop Lee my bishop, my pastor, because I will never be ashamed. Because when I played football, I was not ashamed to wear that jersey on my back that said, Have the Grace Warriors. When I had that track suit on, I was not ashamed that it said University of Delaware. And all you football players that wear the jerseys of the people that play on Sunday, you're not ashamed to wear that Ravens jersey or that Eagles jersey. You're not ashamed to buy that LeBron jersey, Anthony Davis jersey. All these people's jerseys, you're not ashamed to put those people on, the, on your back. Well, I know those people, unless you personally know them, I'm not going to do one single thing to increase my life except entertain me. That's it but they're not going to add any value to your life. So I rep Jesus and I don't mind putting him on my back because he adds value to my life. 
And if you can wear a jersey that say Michael Jordan, you call him the GOAT. Well, I know that Jesus is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. He's the greatest human being that ever walked this planet. And I serve a God that's greater than any other God that is on this planet. And the reason why I said any other God, because you said he, he, he just stood in the valley of the gods. But every knee will bow. Mm -hmm. Every tongue will confess. And that's what's so awesome about the Bible, because, you know, even when when God came and he, he ran into the God, the, the spirits in them said, why are you come to torment me before the time? They knew what was up. But God says even the devil knows that he is Lord, right? He trembled. And he trembled. The devil knows that he's Lord. And you ain't smart enough to figure out that he's Lord if the devil himself know that he's Lord. So he know he ain't boss. So Lucifer is a created being. Understand that, and that God created all of this. But, but we serve a great, big, wonderful God. We, we really do. And I would say in closing that I've gone through loss. Obviously, it was my father, um, my grandmother. I mean, I had uncles that passed away this year. All I, all I want people to do, you. if you close your eyes today, do you know where you will spend eternity? That is really the question. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a good person. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a core value system. I don't think there's anything wrong with correcting your children. I don't think there's anything wrong telling your child that this is a role of a man. This is a role of a woman. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that there is a God. There is something hiding you because one of the tricks of the enemy for me is to make you think only you can solve your problem. And because only you can solve your problem and you don't realize there's a, something higher, you go to alternative sources that lead you into a worse place, be it alcohol, be it gambling, be it womanizing, being whatever it is, you seek an alternative that's going to actually make you lower than where you were. I don't think there's nothing wrong to tell your kid, you got a problem, let's pray about it. But it's important for you to pray with your children. That's part of what she talked about, training them up. And because I was trained in the way of Christ, trained in the way of Christ. My dad took me places. My mom took me places. But my mom expressed the importance to me to put God first. And I don't think there's anything wrong with putting God first. It's okay to have a career. It's okay to have a good job. It's okay to have all those things but they can't be first. When you put God first, all those things will be added unto you. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be added. I believe when you seek to add all those things first, that's how they crumble. And that's how you lose your mental stability because you think you're holding all of those pieces together. And when you think that your job is your source, when your job is gone, you can crumble. I love my father, I love my grandmother, I love my aunts and uncles, but they're not the source of my happiness. Jesus is the source of my happiness. So when I am lonely, Jesus can give me joy. He can give me a spirit of praise for that spirit of heaviness that tries to come on you. So just because heaviness tries to come on you, you don't have to keep it on you because what we fighting is a spiritual battle. Yeah. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. Look, you're not fighting with this. You're not fighting with this. You might feel like you, we're not fighting with this. The enemy is after your mental real estate because he knows that God is the one that gives peace to your mind. God is the one that gives peace when you're laying that loved one down. God is the one that brings peace when you've gone through a loss. God is the one that brings peace when you was in a car accident. God is the one that brings peace when your body is, is hurting you and you on that, that hospital bed and you think like, I don't know what else. God is the one that can bring peace in those situations. And I'm speaking from my own personal experience. When the doctor say there's nothing else I can do, still small voice will say, I got you. 
So even when I felt like crying and I felt like giving up, there was a voice that said, I got you. And then I could open up the word and God could give me a scripture and that I could find comfort and peace. So it's about having that peace. It, it's about having that peace that surpasses all your natural understanding. And I don't believe that you could ever get that true peace outside of God. Remember, man, in the beginning in the garden, they wanted to know the knowledge of good and evil so that they could be like God. That's what they thought. Well, well when you know evil, evil is depressing. Evil is depressing. Look on your news. You see evil every day. It's depressing. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge of evil wasn't a good thing because the knowledge of evil can leave you melancholy and downtrodden. But I'm telling you, when you get into this word, it can change your continents. It can actually give you hope. I think hope is one of the, the most important things that we can have is that we know that God is in control. So it don't matter about who's in the White House. God's in control. It don't matter about who's your governor. God is in control because we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We walk on a higher plane. We are governed by a higher authority. I know there's a rules there. Are, I know that there are laws. I know there are things that we have to abide by because we live in the United States of America. But I know a God that can bypass all laws. I know a God that can bypass all rules. I know a God that basically say that I don't have the money for it, but somehow I get the money for it. I know a God, when they say we about to turn off your lights, somehow your lights stay on. I know a God that when you hate your job and they say you got to come back to your job, somebody will call you within hours saying, I got another job for you. I know a God that when you lost a job, you get a job making 20, 30 percent more than the, than the job you had the first time. I know a God that just keeps showing up. I know a God that when I lost a child, he said that I would have more sons. And I see it every single day, me getting more sons. So I know a God that just never fails. He keeps doing great things. He keeps doing great things. He has, he's, he's never lost. He's never lost. I don't care what anybody say, he ain't never lost. So if you think you lost, hold on. Hold on. I promise you a change is going to come if you hold on. So this is why I go to church. Ma, you want to pray us out? We don't usually pray out, but since I got a special guest, you can pray out and then I'll close. Go ahead. Lord Jesus, we come right now. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this today, God. Lord, we ask you to touch those that are under the sound of my voice, God. Those that are in trouble, Lord. Those that are being abused, God. We ask you to fix it, God. Knowing, God, that you're able, oh God, to break every habit, Lord. Remember those that are sick today, Lord, in the hospital, Lord. Remember those that are in jail, that are innocent, oh God. Lord, we ask you to undertake, even for the president, God, we ask you to save him, God. Realizing, God, we know that prayer changes things. God, we ask you to bless everybody, oh God, that listen to this broadcast. God, those that are out of your your will, God. Give them a mind to go somewhere, Lord, uh, where they can get the real truth, Lord. Uh, knowing, oh God, if we call you, you will answer prayer. Uh, God, we thank you in advance, oh God. Uh, even the jobs that they need, God, we ask you to open the door, Lord. Uh, God, we ask you to move the hindrance, oh God. Uh, help them to step back, Lord, and let you do it, God. Uh, help them to obey your voice, Lord. Uh, those that you're talking to today, Lord, uh, help them to say yes to your will. Uh, God, lead them to the right place, oh God. Uh, help them to make the right decision, Lord. We ask you to bless it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, yeah. those that are in trouble today, uh, God, we ask you to fix it. Uh, Lord, the drug addict, oh God, the homeless today, uh, God, we ask you to reach down and fix it for them, Lord. Uh, remember that mother that's looking for her child, Lord, that father, Lord, uh, that wife, oh God, concerned about her husband, God. Uh, we ask you to move in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, send healing, uh, send deliverance, oh God, bind every spirit that's not like you. Uh, God, shield and protect yes. us, oh God. Uh, keep us covered by your blood, Lord, because uh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Uh, right now in your name, God, uh, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Well, there you have it. That's why I go to church. Family edition. It's in the blood. I encourage everyone, if we don't have a church home, find one. Find one. Don't run from God. Because he's in a fixed position. He's right where you 
need him to be when you want to open up your heart to accept him. So again, this is Michael Gibson. That's why I go to church. This message has blessed you. I ask that you share it out. And this is Evangelist Lendo Gibson, my mother. God bless you. And I go to church because it's in my blood. Stay blessed.